Hello, vinyl community and any other rock and roll children who have stopped by. I'm Gary, and this is Physical Format Rock and Roll. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is not a beer episode. This is actually a hot chocolate episode. It's a little chilly in this room, actually. Uh, so, a little different drink. Anyway... I've got some pretty good finds here. Uh, these are all albums that I found while digging through the crates. A couple of them are blind buys that I basically got because of other people in the vinyl community talking about them. They're all in pretty good shape, except for the first one. And that's what I'll go ahead and show, get that out of the way. Of course, it's a terrific album, but uh, Fireball by Deep Purple. I do not own this. Uh, well, I do now, but I didn't. And that is why I kind of rushed and picked it up because I do want this. Uh, but unfortunately, the record's a little bit on the beat up side. I mean, it plays, but uh, this is what I would just call a placeholder. This album is too important. You know, this is the Mach 2 version of uh, Deep Purple. I think this came out in 1971. And uh, I eventually will get a better copy than what I have here. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that one. Next up is one of the ones that I got that is kind of a blind buy. But yet it's not. It's not like I don't know this band. But this is Canned Wheat by the Guess Who. And this one is in very nice shape, as you can see there. Check out the, what is that? The Pickwick? Or, yeah, that's what I thought. Pickwick label. Uh, this is from 1969. This is a 1979 pressing, though, I believe. And uh, this is, uh, it has, well, what's, what's the song on here? No Time is on here, but they actually recorded that song twice. They re-recorded it uh, after this on for American Woman. It was on the backside of that. But it does have Laughing is also on here. But uh, my buddy Aaron Muth Alamere talks about this album. I know he really likes this band. There's several people in the vinyl community who like the Guess Who. So when I found this, and it, it looks to be in excellent shape, it's kind of a no-brainer. I picked that one up. Next is a Total Blind Buy, and that is Renaissance. I am getting... I, I'm not even sure how to pronounce that. Uh, I'm kind of ignorant on that. So I'm not going to attempt to uh, <laughs> try to pronounce that. But uh, Renaissance, Chris Profi talked about this when we were uh, talking about female vocalists here on one of the episodes that we did on Jeff Witcher's uh, channel where we get together, uh, Josh and Aaron and Jeff and Chris and I are different variations of us. Uh, but anyway... Uh, we've also had Sam St. John on there recently because he goes on every channel. But uh, this is, this was released. You can see this is really good shape too. This was released in 75 and this is a 1977 pressing. Very different uh, style of album. This is progressive rock to an extent, although it's also, it's uh, a lot of it is just acoustic and piano driven. Uh, very different, still sinking my teeth into this. I will say it's interesting. I haven't made a final judgment on it. I, it's definitely an album I need to digest. Uh, Tony from Two From The Trunk said I need to listen to it at least four times. So I will not make any judgments yet on that. Next up, I think everybody has this one, right? From 1983, Metal Health by Quiet Riot. This has the distinction of being the very first uh, heavy metal album to go to number one on the Billboard charts. Of course, it has Come On, Feel the Noise, 
uh, on here, the song Metal Hell. But it's also got Slick Black, Cadillac, you know, Thunderbird. Uh, this definitely has some good stuff on here. This is a fun album. Uh, never going to be one of my all-time favorite albums or anything. But I felt like I had to own it. And this is in really good shape. I have seen this album various times. But every time I see it, you know, it just seems like it's always beat to hell. And, uh, you know, obviously, as you, as I told you, the Deep Purple, I still occasionally do that, but I'm trying not to. But you can see that. That's in really good shape. Uh, I've already played it. Plays great. Great sounding record. Uh, happy to own it. Metal Health by Quiet Riot. A couple more. I told you that I had some good finds in here. Next up, I just saw this on uh, JC. The flip side, he uh, just recently picked this up too. White Snake, ready and willing. Not ready and willing, ready and willing. A-N apostrophe. This is the earlier version of White Snake. Uh, this is from 1980. Even though it has a song, Fool for Your Loving, is on there, which they would remake and uh, put that on their 87 album. But this is, uh, well, this one is actually, this is our third studio album. And John Lord is on here, as is Ian Pace, of course, who were with David Coverdale during his magnificent time with Deep Purple. Uh, but on this one, you also have Bernie Marston and Mick Moody on guitars. So those are the different ones. This, if you've never heard earlier White Snake, it's much more bluesy, more funky, uh, a little, quite a bit different than later White Snake. Still rocks. Uh, this is a great album though. I, I really recommend early White Snake also, if you are not familiar with it. David Coverdale's vocals, one of, one of my favorite singers. Very excellent on this early stuff. Uh, he definitely can sing that blues rock stuff, man. Finally, uh, here's one. I don't know if I've even seen this on vinyl before out in the wild. So I was really excited to find this. It is the first thing on vinyl that I have of this band. And this is In Excess, Listen Like Thieves, In Excess, very good band. Um, became popular in the 80s. This is, I believe, like their fifth studio album. Listen Like These came out in 1985. Uh, of course, the big hit, What You Need on here. Fantastic song. Uh, probably, if you're around my age, you've danced to this song at some point. Uh, but this is a good album. Not their best album, but very good. Uh, it was really wonderful to be able to pull this out and listen to it because um, I had this on cassette. So I haven't got to hear it for quite a while. And uh, I love that, you know, an album that you used to have in some format or another and you haven't got to hear it for a while and then you're able to rebuy it. So you get to revisit these songs and it's kind of like, you know, they start clicking with you and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember this song. It's, it's great. Uh, I like doing that. I, I got to do that with Fastway a few years back. So in excess, terrific band. Uh, recommend this. I love that cover, too. How you can see Michael kind of faded in, in the background there. Uh, of course, he died way too young. But in excess, listen like thieves. So those are my vinyl finds for this time around. Hopefully you saw something there you liked. I'm hoping you guys are out there. I know I've got some fellow uh, members out there who do a lot of crate digging, uh, kind of go along the lines I do, you know, like that old goat's vinyl. Uh, Tuco, the Vinyl Hunter, all kinds. Everybody's out there crate digging, man. I love it. These are some of my favorite videos to watch from people, and I love making it. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Gary. This is Physical Format Rock and Roll. Till the next time, my friends, I will see you down the road. <laughs>